Hello, today uh, we are going to go over Dominant Species, uh, designed by Chad Jensen and published by GMT Games, uh, which is a little unusual because they're more known for their war games. Um, and this is a fairly heavy Euro game, albeit an extremely aggressive one. Uh, the game centers around worker placement and area majority. Uh, so we're going to go over the components real quick. Uh, I'm going to try to teach you how to play, and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so these are the components for dominant species. Um, there's the board. It's a fairly uh, large board. If you have a small table, it might be difficult. Um, this is the uh, starting tile configuration. You can see it's in case you forget. Um, and you've got the stacks of tiles over here. All the tiles are very nice quality. They have nice artwork, very sturdy. Um, you have six colors of player pieces, these very nice uh, wooden pieces. You have species cubes, dominance markers, and uh, action pawns. Okay, we have this bag full of element tokens, which are going to be drawn from the game, uh, during the game, sorry, and uh, placed over in various areas. Uh, we've got initiative markers to determine player order. Uh, we've got player boards for the six different uh, classes of animals. Um, and these are all, uh, well, I'll explain their differences later on, but they're all fairly similar, and the sheet mostly serves as a player aid. And then um, we've got these cards, which have very nice artwork, very uh, nice format, and are nice and sturdy. So those are the components, and now I'm going to try to teach you how to play. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go over how to play the game. Um, there is a lot going on in this game, but uh, I'm going to try to cover as best as I can. Um, most of the game really centers around this area. This is the uh, worker placement area, basically. Um, so the game plays out in rounds. And each round has three phases, and in the first phase, uh, the players are going to place these action pawns out wherever you see uh, one of these eyeball spaces, and um, then the second phase, you're going to go from top down, resolving everything, and if there are multiple in a line, you will resolve them from uh, whoop, <laughs> ah, left to right. Okay, so uh, we're just going to go through. Uh, the different classes of animals are all very similar. The only differences are uh, your starting elements, which is basically the food you need, um, to survive, and then they all have a tiny twist, uh, which we will cover as we get to these various uh, stages in the game. So, the first uh, space, this is the player order um, track. If you move here, you basically just advance your pawn, or your token one space up the track. Uh, this space actually has a, a special quality, is after you resolve it, you will move your action pawn somewhere else, so you will technically, whoever takes this will also get the uh, last placement of that round. Um, adaptation, you will take one of these elements and place it on uh, your player board. Um, regression, uh, after, at the end of each round, the first round this will be empty, at the end of each round any untaken adaptation tokens will slide down, so like if these two were taken, those two will slide down. Uh, and during regression, if you don't place a pawn, you will lose one element for each thing that matches. So if you have a sun or if you have a little skull thing, uh, you will lose those tokens. Unless you place a pawn here, each pawn will save one of those. So if I place one, I can save either a sun or a uh, skull. And the reptile special ability is that they always get um, one free placement there, basically. Uh, moving down here to abundance. This will let you take an element and place it out on the board somewhere. Uh, they go on the corners of hexes and affect all, well, up to three spaces that it touches. Um, and again, untaken tokens will slide down at the end of the round. Uh, wasteland. Um, what normally happens to the wasteland step is uh, these tundra tiles every element that matches uh, that is touching a tundra tile, so here we have grain and 
grass, every grain and grass adjacent to a tundra tile is basically uh, removed from the board. Taking the wasteland space lets you remove one of these tokens to protect it um, from the ice age. Uh, and again, these will slide down, so this won't come into play until at least the third round. Uh, but depletion, if you select this, uh, normally depletion won't do anything. If you select it, you get to pick one token of a matching type. So if these were both here, I could pick either the grass or the grain, one of them anywhere on the board, and remove it, which can be very nasty if you time it correctly. Um, glaciation is another um, odd space in that only this first space will resolve each round. These other spaces are essentially reserving glaciation, so we would resolve it this round, and at the end of the round, these will slide for us. So you can reserve it up to four rounds in advance. Uh, what glaciation does is you take a tundra tile and you extend the tundra. Um, and this is technically a seven-step process, but it's very simple. You remove all the species. You put back one species of each color. Uh, you would remove any elements that were completely encircled. So like here, that would remove the grass. And you will score bonus points based on the tiles it is touching. So down here, uh, whenever you score bonus points, the bonus point progression is always the same. Um, it's the basic triangular numbers progression, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, and so on. But there it is for uh, reference around the game if you don't have it memorized, uh, which you probably don't. But um, yeah, that's the bonus points. And those will come up in a few other spots. Of the game. So that is glaciation. Uh, speciation. Here you will um, choose one of the elements, basically the one you put your spa space in, and you will choose one of those that matches. So if I chose water, I can choose either of these waters, and I will add new species cubes to all adjacent spaces. Uh, the amount you add is in the case of here. So like the tundra, you only get one, but on wetlands and sea, you get four cubes. And the insect special ability is that they get to add one cube to uh, any location on the board. <coughs> okay, moving down again, we have the uh, wanderlust space. This is how you add more tiles to the board. You will take one of these uh, face-up tiles, put it anywhere you want. Uh, it can be touching, have many tiles as long as it's connected to at least one. And you take one of these tokens and place it anywhere on that tile. Um, additionally, asking the Wanderlust action, if there are species in adjacent spaces, those players may uh, choose to move them immediately. So you might do something like that. Um, okay. Not too complicated there. Migration, uh, the space you choose, you see they all have a number, that is how many... Um, this is going to let you move cubes, and that is how many cubes you can move. So if I choose this, I can move any seven of my cubes, one space each, to adjacent tiles. Uh, they can all move to different tiles. They can all be from different tiles. It's just any seven cubes anywhere, one tile each. Uh, the bird special ability um, is that when they take migration, they get to move each cube two spaces instead of uh, just one. For competition, uh, you see each one of these is matching three terrain types. They all match Tundra and then two others. This lets you compete in each of those three areas. So uh, when you compete, you have to have a cube present and you just remove one enemy cube. So if I compete, well, in any of them, I'd be in Tundra and I could uh, knock that out. If I, oh, well, that's right, yeah. If I was in the wetlands as well, I could also knock out this guy. So it's just one from each space you're in. Uh, the spider special ability is that uh, they can always compete in any one space each round. Um, okay, so lastly we have uh, dominant, I'm sorry, domination, uh, which is where most of the points come from in the game. Um, so real quick, I'm going to go over the difference between uh, majority and Dominance. So when you choose uh, domination, you will choose a tile, like I might pick this tile, and we will score it. The player that has the most cubes in that tile, um, so here we have two to one, will score the highest number of points, which would be eight points. 
second place will score the next number, and so on. Uh, some tiles only have one space, like Tundra. Only the highest person will score one point. And as the tiles get more valuable, there will be uh, more spots for third and fourth, etc. Um, however, dominance measures your uh, quality of survival rather than your quantity, um, so to speak. So to measure dominance, you would actually check um, for every element you have, matching uh, an element already present, you basically at one point. So uh, the amphibians here, they have three waters, and there's two waters present, so that's six, because each of these will match three times, uh, while the insects have two grass and a grub, so they would actually also have, they would only have five. Yeah. Because um, that would match, no, I'm sorry, they would only have three. They would match two and then uh, one. Okay, so the uh, amphibians would have dominance there. Um, and whoever has dominance, if, just assume the tables were swamped, here, the amphibians would have the most points, but the insects would have dominance. This is important because whoever has dominance may not necessarily get more points, but over here, they get to pick one of these five cards and um, resolve it. And uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are all uh, very, very big game-changing cards. Um, like, there's one cataclysm that just lets you destroy massive amounts of species. It, uh, let you get bonus points, uh, bonus action pawns for the rest of the game. Uh, they can make other players lose action pawns for the rest of the game. Um, a lot of really powerful game-changing stuff happens over here. So it's important to always have uh, as many matching elements as you can to try to have dominance, even if you don't get all of the points. Okay, so that is the core of the game. Uh, we're going to move on uh, to the third phase, you, that's where you move everything down, slide the glaciation <laughs> markers over, refresh everything, uh, and then you check for survival and extinction. First is extinction, um, any species that don't have any food where they are, uh, like if we have this lonely amphibian out here, um, will die. And the mammal special ability is that they can save one species from uh, extinction. Then when you check survival, uh, whichever player has the most species in tundra spaces, so here the green player has two to the amphibians one, um, gets to take the survival card and activate it, which will score them bonus points uh, equal to the number of spaces they're on. It's kind of a catch-up um, mechanism in that way because getting in the tundra can take away uh, your opportunities for points, but give you points at the end of the round. Okay, so that is a very broad overview of how to play the game, and now I will tell you what I think about it. Okay, so that was uh, how to play Dominant Species. Real quick, I want to go over a couple important points on this. Uh, one, I never said how to actually end the game. Uh, now, every time the last card in the Dominance card deck will be this Ice Age card, which gives you points based on the uh, number of tiles you have Dominance in. Uh, and Basically, after this card's been taken, after all the other cards have been taken, uh, that will end the game. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is another point uh, opportunity for bonus points is when you place a Wanderlust tile, uh, you score bonus points based on the number of tiles it's touching. Um, I think that's about all I missed that's important. Okay, so Dominant Species. Excellent, excellent, excellent uh, game. Can't say enough good things about it. It is very long. It is a very long game, a two-player game uh, with two players that are both staying engaged, paying attention, can easily run uh, two or three hours. I've heard that uh, games with, you know, up to the max player count can easily run for up to five hours. So, definitely not something you're going to play every evening, um, but definitely something you should try. There's um, uh, a very strong tactical element. The board changes not just every round, but every few resolutions, because um, there's a lot of things that add elements, remove elements, add tiles, uh, tundra appears and wipes things out, uh, species get added and move around. 
everything changes very quickly. So it can be hard to plan, but there is a lot of strategy uh, present as well, and you do have to, um, when something bad happens to you, you usually feel like you deserved it. You just didn't plan ahead uh, well enough. So it's, it's punishing in that way, but it's a good kind of punishing. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a very great game. I highly recommend it, um, if you have the time for it.